All right, everybody, what we're going to look at today, we are going to see an introduction to the correlation coefficient, which we refer to as the variable r. So first of all, we want to know what is r. r is a, it's a value, it's a number, and we call it the correlation coefficient. And basically what it does is it helps us determine if a linear model is appropriate for our data. One thing that we often will look at is when we have a set of data, we want to see can we fit a linear model to this. And the correlation coefficient r helps us to decide if we can. r measures the strength and direction of a linear relationship between two variables. And the value of r always falls between negative 1 and 1. Now, when I say that it helps us to... Um, distinguish the strength and direction. Just kind of a general way that we describe R. If we think of this as our number line that represents R, it goes from negative 1 to positive 1, and of course 0 here in the middle. Now what this means, if R is 0, there is no correlation between our two variables, so a straight line model would definitely not be good. Now, as we go to our extremes, to negative 1 and 1, positive 1 indicates to us that we have a perfect positive correlation. Okay, now we don't see a, a value of 1 very often. Same way with negative 1. We don't see data in the real world that gives us a perfect correlation very often. Now, negative 1, that indicates that we have a perfect negative correlation. Okay, so everything in between is usually what we're going to see. We don't often see zero, we don't often see perfect, positive, or negative one. Now typically we kind of split this into two parts. We go from zero to point two, then we go from point two to point eight, and point eight to one. And we do the same thing on the negative side. Okay. Now, each of these sections represents a different strength and um, directionality for our line. If we look at the region between 0 and 0.2, we call that a weak positive relationship. Okay, a weak positive relationship. Then if we look at the region from 0.2 to 8, we consider that to be a moderate positive relationship. So we can see there is some sort of relationship there, but I mean, and you know, we can see that it's got a straight line kind of going to it, but it's, it's not a very strong relationship. Then when we go from 0.8 to 1, this is what we indicate as our strong positive. So there's definitely some sort of relationship going on here. And those are what we want to see um, up around 0.8 to actually indicate to us that there is some sort of linear, good linear relationship going. Now basically this is just mirrored on the other side. From 0 to negative 0.2, we have a weak negative. Uh, from negative 0.2 to negative 0.8, we have a moderate negative. And from negative 0.8 to negative 1, we have a strong negative relationship. So this is just kind of our general guidelines that we follow when we're using R to determine if we actually have some sort of linear relationship. And basically this is just a summary of what I kind of just showed you on our chart. Uh, negative 1 is a perfect negative correlation. From negative 1 to negative 0.8 is a strong negative. Negative 0.8 to negative 0.2 is moderate, and negative 0.2 to 0 is weak negative. Then we've got our positive side of the spectrum. Uh, well, we've got r equals 0, which is no correlation. Then we've got our positive side. So from 0 to 0.2, weak positive. From 0.2 to 0.8, moderate positive. And from 0.8 to 1, strong positive. And of course, 1 being a perfect positive. Now, finding R, this is um, what we're really interested in because 
those relationships don't really mean much to us if we can't find R. Okay, so we have two different ways that we're going to do this. First way, we are going to look at how we would find R by hand. So we've got a formula for that. And I'm going to just kind of give you a little demonstration of this. Okay, so our formula, if we have a set of data, let's see. Oh my, what did I do? Let's try again. There we go. Okay, if we have a set of data, let's say x, we have 6, 10, 14, 19, and 21. For y, we have 5, 3, 7, 8, and 12. Okay, we want to find, is there some sort of linear relationship between these two sets of data, between x and y? Now, our formula for this, to find r by hand, we are going to have r equals, and we're going to have the sum of x minus x bar times y minus y bar, and that is all over n minus 1 times the standard deviation of each value, so of x and y. Okay. So some of this we can find just on our calculator. Um, on the calculator, if we go to our two variable stats, okay, we want to go to our two variable stats. So let's see. Let me bring up my calculator. And I hope you wrote down that data. Let's make this a little bigger. All right, uh, let's see. I need to go, first of all, I need to go into my stats, edit, and I need to enter my data. So for x, I had 6, 10, 14, 19, and 21. Then for y, I had 5, 3, 7, 8, and 12. So we just want to enter that into our lists um, for x and y. I'm going to quit out of that. Then I'm going to do two variable stats. So if we go to stats, and we're going to go over to calc, and the second option down is two variable stats because we want to get the basic um, five number summary for each one of our variables x and y. So x should be set on L1, y should be set on L2. We want to go down and calculate this, and it's going to give us our information. So what we need, if you remember from that formula, we need x bar, and we need y bar, and we need the standard deviation for each one. So I'm just going to jot these down real quick, so let's see x bar I've got 14, sx I've got 6.2, then y bar I've got 7, and sy I've got 3.39. Okay, so those we are going to use for our formula. So let me go back to our formula. All right, and that formula, once again, was r equals, whoops, the sum of x minus x bar, y minus y bar, over n minus 1, whoopsie, sx, sy. Okay, so a couple things that we're going to have to calculate uh, based on our data. And let me just jot that down one more time, too. We've got 6, 10, 14, 19, 21, 5, 3, 7, 8, 12. 
Okay, so based on our data, um, what we're going to have to first figure out is we're going to have to figure out our x minus x bar and our y minus y bar, and we need to do that for every value that we have in our table. So I'm just going to make kind of a little chart here, and I'm going to do all of my x minus x bars. Now if you remember uh, from the calculator, we got x bar equals 14. So that means I'm going to do 6 minus 14, which is negative 8. I'm going to do 10 minus 14. And I'm just going to go through all of my data for this. Then I need to also calculate y minus y bar. So y bar from our calculator we got as 7. So 5 minus 7, 3 minus 7, 11 minus 7, Okay, and what we're going to do now is if you look at our formula, we have to do the product of each one of these. So we're doing the sum of the product of x minus x bar times y minus y bar. And then that product, that is what we are going to be finding the sum of. So for my next column, I'm going to find the product of each one of these. So negative 8 times negative 2, negative 4 times negative 4, whoops, 16, I promise I can multiply, 0 times 0, let's see, then we've got 5, then we've got 35. And now we want to find the sum of that. So just a quick addition, and I believe we get 72 there. So now it's time to start plugging everything into our formula, okay? So we have, let's see, r equals, we have our sum, we've got to do n minus 1, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 values. Then we have to do the standard deviation of each, and I got 6.2 for x and 3.39 for y. So by my calculations, I get 0.856, which would indicate to us that we have a strong positive linear relationship for this data. Okay, so that's doing it by hand. It can be pretty tedious, especially if you have a lot of data values. Luckily, we only had five, um, but that's how we would calculate it by hand. Okay, so now we're going to look at how do we find this on the calculator. So let me get my calculator back out. And we are going to use what is called a linear regression t-test. So we should still have our data saved in our two columns, L1 and L2, and we want that, so that's good. Now we're going to go to stat. This time we're going to go over to test, and we're going to scroll down until we find the linear regression t-test. Oh, there it is. Linear regression t-test. Okay, again, you want x to be in L1 and L2, or x to be in L1, y to be in L2, so that's all good. And we're going to go down and hit Calculate. And if we scroll down through our values, there we go. R equals 0.855. We got 0.86, so we might be off just a little bit because we rounded um, some values, like we rounded uh, the standard deviation values that we got from our calculator but pretty darn close. So this one still tells us that we have a, uh, pos or a strong positive relationship. 
and much easier than doing it by hand. Okay, so that is your introduction to R, the correlation coefficient.